to come out. Come on, baby.
And as we come to a decision because of your word, help us to say yes. And when we're not willing to turn, we're asking you, God, to turn us and make us and move in this place. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise because we know it's yours in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. We ask it right now.
So before you hear the man of God, we are going to have a selection, and it's going to be from Sister Edie. And then after that, we will hear from Pastor Bart. We just need to keep looking unto the author and the finisher of our faith.
to just start this celebration of 27 years in the vineyard. I don't know, it seems like every time I get ready to come in here, I stay up half the night trying to seek God for a message. Last time I was here, I, I just labored until I sweated. And this brother sat over here and God just changed things around. I was up last night. I just want to be an encouragement to the man of God because I know what it takes now to be out on this battlefield. I don't know whether you know it or not, King of Kings, but your pastor is an endangered species. Yeah. You see, the enemy messes with you, but the enemy wants to kill him. to kill him is because you don't have a platform to reach the multitudes he do. And he needs to take him out. I sat there and watched the slam dunk contest that, as I was studying last night. And I said, you know, around this time of the year in the NBA, and I love my NBA, the hype goes to another level. But I said, when do we get to the place that the hype for the man of God go to? I told somebody before, if one of those ball players that we love so much would leave tomorrow, they're only if they might Twitter and they might tweet and say he's gone. But no lives will be changed. Right. 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 But if this man walks off the battlefield, right. you see, when he leaves, lives change. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The Bible says, the Bible says, how can they hear except they be a preacher? Right. Hallelujah, glory to God. Yeah. He's an endangered species. Yeah. You need to pray for him. You need to cover him every minute of the day because the enemy is out to get him. The enemy is out to get him. Glory, I said all that. I'm, I'm going I'm 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 to get ready to preach. Glory to God. Elder Thorne is going to read the scripture that we're going to be in today. The Queen. That means call you Queen.
those who are sucking this morning or this afternoon, bumblebees can fly. Bumblebees can fly. The Bible says, for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel that they are bewildered and the land has closed them in. Many times God takes us into places and, and puts us in situations and it looks like, God, what are you thinking about? Uh, but God knows exactly what he was doing. Now the title of this message may seem like it's, it's a real dumb statement because bumblebees obviously do fly. But that's the point I want to make this afternoon. You see, scientists have determined that it is physically impossible for a bumblebee to fly. You see, it has something to do with their wings being too small and their bodies being too big. But in spite of this impossibility, bumblebees still fly. Somebody help me here. Glory to God. And, 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 and it's this fact or this illustration in the theme of this message you see, life sometimes often deals us stuff and brings us to places that we are uncomfortable with and places that we say, God, how do you, how do you, how do you figure bringing me into a place like this? How do you, how do you, how do you uh, orchestrate me after I prayed and after I fasted? You put me in a situation like this. You see, God was bringing the children of Israel out, but he put them in a compromising situation. Yeah, yeah. You would you would think that that that, that, that God who, who knows all and sees all would find a direct path across the land and put them in a, in a, in a place that they can be successful. But instead of doing that, the Bible said that God kept them uh, against mountains on their right hand, mountains on their left hand, a sea in front of them, and the enemy behind them. Oh, God. You see, you see, Pastor, sometimes God's gonna put you in some situations. Read 
the scripture, you would think that God was setting them up to lose. But God said, I'm setting you up to win. Glory to God. Sometimes we don't understand why God got us in a hard place. He said, because I'm setting you up to win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because if I brought you any other way, hallelujah, you would wind up being a loser. Didn't the Bible not say he did not take them the easy way?
Y'all don't mind if I take my coat off there. I'm getting ready to go into second gear. See, even though we know God is going to move, glory to God, I believe everybody here, I have no doubt. Pastor, know God is going to move. Hallelujah, he's going to move on our behalf. But the thing is, we don't know when he's going to move, so that leaves it open for speculation. See, a lot of times when we're praying and we, and we realize, God, I, I'm still in this situation. We don't know whether God's going to move. Now, uh, it opens us up for speculation. We start, we start thinking, maybe I have to work this thing out on my own. I said, I'm, I'm telling you, Pastor, don't fix nothing yourself. Just let God do what God's going to do. Hallelujah. Yeah, don't, don't try to fix it yourself. When it looks bad, just say, God, it's bad. And you got to do something about it. Hallelujah. See, 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 being saved don't remove our human speculation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't care how saved you are. You can walk around with a big Bible, big as this pulpit. Hallelujah. Quote every scripture in it. Hallelujah. Speculation takes over. You close the Bible. Yes. Hallelujah. And you try to work that thing out yourself. Yes. In other words, we try to figure out how this problem is going to work out with our own limited ability. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm going to fix this thing out. So we lose three nights of sleep. Yes. Hallelujah. About yes. four missed meal. And we ain't figured it out yet. Yes. But anytime that happens, that's a scary situation. When you try to apply what you what you speculate that God is getting ready to do because you don't really understand what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Sometimes when you go to sleep, you wake up, oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do today. It's a scary place to be in. Don't you realize that Israel, glory to God, was in a, in a hard place. It was in a hard place. And not only was it in a hard place, God said, I'm getting ready to harden up. The heart of the man is going to chase you down. You see, even though we have faith, it won't necessarily move, remove the apprehension that comes or stop, glory to God, us from questioning the promises of God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I've been pastoring for eight years. And I, I need you to know, saints, I have questioned the promises of God. <laughs> I said, God, when you going to do this thing? If you going to do this thing? It seemed that according to, to the law of aerodynamics that the 
situation. And when I was in this situation myself, I hadn't started pastoring full time yet. And I was working at the airport. And I came outside. And I think I might have told my wife when, she, when God first gave me this message. I was troubled about a lot of things. Starting a church and doing some stuff. I didn't know what we were going to do. It was just, it was just a hard time. I was, I, was, I was just like Israel. And I asked God, I said, why would you put me in a situation like this? I said, people's lives are at stake. And you got me out here. I don't know the first thing about pastoring. I don't know the first thing about anything. But you got me out here. And folks are talking about me behind my back. Oh, yeah. How about somebody over here? Yeah. Talk about me behind my back. Right. Glory to God. Sometimes to my face. Right. Oh. Glory to God. Not too often to my face because I'm a fighter. I'm going to get upset real quick. Yeah. Just for a minute. Yeah. Most of it was behind my back. And this big bumblebee kept bothering. I'm just, I'm just waving him away, trying to shoo him away, shoo him away, shoo him away. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, that's your message. That bumblebee is your deliverance. Mm. I said, what are you talking about, God? He said, they're saying you can't do this. They're saying it's going to never work. But they said the same thing about him, but look at him. They said the same thing about that bee that you're trying to shoo away, but look at him. He's doing exactly what I called him to do. Now you get up and quit feeling sorry for yourself and go do exactly what I called you to do.
trying to figure out how is he lasting up there in Garfield? Yeah. You're losing a lot of sleep trying to figure out what you're doing and how you're doing it. Just like 
they said of the ball that he couldn't fly. Now he don't know anything. So he just fly anyway. I pray that you would. Pastor Carter and First Lady Charter, that they get to the place where no limitations. If God said it, we can do it. If God has spoken it and put it in our spirit, we can bring it to pass. Never again will we allow what the enemy say that we can't do. But we will just spread our wings and fly in spite of our limitations. Glory to God. Father, we thank you. Glory. Glory to God. Service. Is there anybody here? Usually we don't have you don't have folks in church on, on Sunday evening in front of the Lord. <laughs> Once a while you get one, not too often. Oh my God. If there's somebody here that don't know the Lord, if there's somebody here that feel like God has got you between a rock and a hard place, I just want to touch and agree with you that you can be like that bumblebee. Allow God to let you spread your wings. Thank you. 